In homework 3A, question 2, we have similar looking problems, but different context. Let me fix this right here. Okay, so on the first one, a bond pays $100 coupon annually. So down here, we're going to change this to 1. The coupon rate must be 10% because the payment is $100. Okay, now if the price of the bond is thirteen forty four, I'll copy this and put it into the present value. Okay, and uh, I'll just leave the face value at a thousand because eventually we're going to talk about the face value being a thousand dollars. Okay, um, if the price of the bond is thirteen forty four. $1,244, and it never matures, then the only maturity is what? Well, remember from the notes that the yield of maturity for what we call a perpetuity is the current yield, the coupon payment over the price. And if you remember where this came from is we have this perpetuity where n is never ending. So if n is never ending, this number is bigger than one in mathematics. When you're raising the denominator, which is greater than one, to higher and higher power, this number gets extremely large. We're holding that constant. So when the denominator gets really, really big, these two things go to zero. So we have this perpetuity here, right? And we want to solve for i. And so we solve for i using higher level mathematics. And we get this equation, and we solve for i here. We call that the current yield. It's just the current, or the, the, the annual payment divided by the price of the bond. So that's one way we can do this. I'll put it right here. So let's go back over here. We could type, we want to know the interest rate, right? We could type the coupon payment, which is $100, divided by the price, which is $1,344. And then we hit enter. And we get 7.44%. And this is where we're going to have a little fun with Excel. And we got a percent up there in words, so we don't need the percent symbol. It would be the correct answer, correct? Okay. Now, this is where it gets kind of cool. I could do that, or I could just simply use my rate function, where the rate is the number of periods, and I'll change this in a second. The payment is $100, and we're going to make that negative. The price, oh, sorry, the price is negative because we're paying the price, right? <clears throat> so the negative B6 here is representing the fact that we have to pay a price, in this case, $1,344, for the right to receive these $100 payments into infinity. Now recall that this particular bond doesn't have a maturity and it doesn't have a face value, so the square bracket right here, the square bracket around face value is means it's optional, so we can leave it out. So it's like assuming that the um, face value is zero. So we hit enter, and this is negative because this uh, um, number of periods is five. So um, let me show you that we can uh, click on this down here, and we get the same value. Well, we don't get the same value because it's a thousand. But if I make this zero, we get the same negative 25.93%, right? Um, this is a bond that only has five periods. We're only getting $100 for five periods. The rate is negative 25.93%. In our example, the bond never matures. So the number of periods is some large number of years. Um, and the problem with Excel doing this is that we can't type in infinity here, right? 
We get an error message. So what do we do instead? Well, let's type in a big number, 50. Well, we're not quite at 7.44% that we got from our current yield calculation, right? 100 divided by $1,344, 7.44%. So maybe the number appears needs to be even bigger. So let's try 150. What well, 150, if I incre keep increasing the number of periods, <laughs> what happens to the interest rate? It looks like 150 is big enough. And what, what does that mean? Well, 182 years in the future, are you gonna are you personally gonna care about getting a hundred dollar payment? You're gonna be long dead. So that's kind of like the idea, right? Um, so let's go back and understand why when we add um, periods to our bond that the yield does not change. It's not changing, right? Okay, so we'll just we'll consider 150 big enough, right? We'll consider that infinity in terms of time value money. Now to understand, let's go, let's go back in time on our PowerPoint um, to the original equation. Okay, so. Our rate equation here um, finds the interest rate over here, the red eye, yield to maturity. It solves for it numerically, given the value of the number of periods, n, the payment, c, the price, p, and the future value, which in our case is zero, right? So you can think of this as being gone. Okay, so let's just make that gone, right? So this, this right here is just zero. Zero divided by that is zero, right? Because we have no face value yet. Okay, so what this little thing is right here, if I go from, how many periods over here? If I go from 150 to 151, how much does the price go up by? Well, the price goes up by the coupon payment, $100, divided by one plus the interest rate. Okay, so one plus, we'll call it 1.0744. That's one plus the interest rate, right? Raised to the 151st power. So that's how much the price goes up by when we add 151st payment. We're adding zero to the price. So if we add zero to the price, the price is not changing. If the price doesn't change, <laughs> the interest rate doesn't change. Because remember, when price goes up, interest rates go down. So if price is not changing, interest, rate, interest rates are not changing. So that's why when we add another period, how much does the price go up by? It only goes up by uh, less than a penny. So the price is not changing, which is why this interest rate is not changing. Okay, so you can use the, you can use this and solve for I numerically, or you can use what it converges to, the solution what it converges to, C over P to calculate this interest rate. And this is just $100 divided by the price. And you get the same thing. So you can use the rate equation or you can use the current yield equation. You get the same thing. Because 152 is so large that it's essentially infinity. Okay, now this presents a problem. When you go to 445 years, Excel kind of falls apart. Let's just show you how it falls apart. So let's go ahead and increase, instead of an infinity up here, let's go ahead and increase it. To, um, instead of infinity, instead of thinking this is infinity, we're going to think of it as 152 years. Let's increase that to 200 years. Let's increase that to 300 years. Let's increase it to 400 years. Let's increase it to 500 years or 450 years. Oh, this is interesting. 
When I did this earlier, um, Excel wasn't able to handle it. So I guess it does handle it. This is kind of weird. Maybe because I made the face value zero. But when I did this earlier, I had an error message, and I'll show you. Let's choose a thousand years. Huh. Okay. Let's go back to 445 years. Maybe it'll show up when I change the face value to a thousand. Okay. So I guess it works. Uh, I apologize for messing you up there. So this is still 7.44%. Okay. Hit enter. Now, let's try this scenario. The price of the bond is still $1,344. It matures in 445 years. And has a face value of thousand dollars. So now we got to change the face value to a thousand, and this is where we might have a problem. Yeah, um, Excel is using numerical solutions for i here, so it kind of craps out. So what you have to do is you have to back down the number of periods. Let's go to three hundred. Okay. Let's go to two fifty, two seventy, two eighty. 279, 278. Okay, so Excel has a bit of a problem when you have a face value. It kind of craps out once the number of periods gets really, really large. So we'll just answer that with 7.44. Okay. Now, because we have a face value and we have a coupon payment, now, don't get these two confused. 100 divided by the price is what we call the current yield or the yield to maturity on a perpetuity. $100 divided by the face value is what's called the coupon rate, and that would be 10%. <clears throat> okay, so let's change the price to $920. And it matures in, well, when we change the price down to $20, we have an issue with Excel. So we have to lower the number of periods. So let's just do 200, 150. You just kind of keep increasing until Excel is not perfect. So it looks like 125. It, oh, 120, it crapped out 125, 120, 119, 119. So it looks like uh, infinity here, or 445 is going to be 113. Okay, the price of the bond is $120, it matures in 4 to 45 years, which 113 is close enough to in terms of time value money. And it has a face value of $1,000. The yield of maturity is going to be 10.87. So you just got to use the highest number that Excel will accept in terms of the number of payments. And hit enter to make sure it works. And the coupon rate is still 100 divided by 1,000. So that's 10%. If the yield of maturity is greater than the coupon rate, the price of the bond is blank, the face value of the bond. So let's look at that. Where's the situation where the yield of maturity, yield of maturity is greater than the coupon rate? So here the yield of maturity is greater than the coupon rate and the price of the bond is less than the face value. So we can type in less than here. Okay. Now in part F, the current yield for bond in question 1A equals, remember what the current yield is? The current yield It's just the yield to maturity for a perpetuity. So 7.44.
the current yield for the bond in 1C, right here, scenario 1C, well, that's still the current yield is still C divided by P, right? So it's still 7.44%. The current yield for a 10% $100 five-year bond that is selling for $1,129, it equals what? Well, what's the difference here? The coupon payment is still $100, right? So for this bond, the current the the current coupon payment is $100, and you divide that by the price, so it's $100 divided by the price. I'll do that in Excel. Turn it to a percent. And then add two decimal places. Get rid of the percent symbol, hit enter. Okay, so we got everything good to go up there, right? In uh, scenario two of our question, now we're comparing a thousand dollar zero coupon bonds. And what that means is we have a thousand dollar face value and then we have a zero payment. We don't have any payments, zero coupon bonds. So the payments are all zero. And then the price of our bonds are all gonna be 863.28. Whoops, 863.28. And we want to know the yield of maturity, and then for the first scenario in part A, it matures in one year. So we want to know what the rate is. So let's type equal rate, and number of periods, payment, the price, which we have to make negative, right? And then the face value. We hit enter and we get 15.84%. Okay, 15.84%. Let's go back to the notes. And so this is a zero coupon bond. Where is it at? Okay, on a zero coupon bond, we can use this equation, which we did. We want to find the rates. So we're solving for I, the red numbers, or the red letter. We're solving for I. Given the price of 863.28, the coupons all being zero, right? The maturity being one, and the face value being a thousand. Now remember, we plug in zero here, which is what Excel does. You're left with just this, but then n is just equal to one. So if I solve, if we solve this for i here, what Excel is doing is this, but with n equal one. One divided by one is one. So really, the yield of maturity is just the face value divided by P minus one. So let's go over here and calculate it. The face value is 1,000 divided by the price, which is 863.28 minus one. And we'll get 15.84%, which is what we get. So there's two ways to calculate this. You can use this solution here or you can use Excel's rate function, which is this, but solving numerically for I, given P, C, F, and N. Okay? Here, we're gonna just change the maturity to five. We're gonna change the number of years to five. And we get down to 2.98%. Okay, we can do our equation again. Remember, we can do our, our uh, zero coupon bond equation here, but we have to raise F over P to the one over N power. So this is F 
over the price, the face value over the price, we got to raise that to the 1 divided by n, in this case 5, power. So f divided by p raised to the 1 divided by n power. And we got to subtract off 1. We get the same thing, 2.98%. Okay. And then you do it for 10 years. So the number of periods is 10 years, right here, 10 years. The payment, coupon payments are zero. The price enters negatively, 863.28, and the face value is 1,000. And whether we take um, F, right here, F divided by P and raise that ratio to 1 over the 10th power. Subtract that from 1, we get the same number, 1.48%. Okay, then we go 20 years and we're down to 0.74%. Whether we use the rate function in Excel or we use our formula in the notes. Okay. Now, down here in E, 2E, the yield maturity does what as the maturity rises? As maturity is increasing, what's happened to the yield maturity? Well, it falls. The price of a 20-year coupon bond is what? If it has the same yield maturity as the bond in question 2A. Okay, well, let's just calculate it. We want to know the price. Let me do this. I know the price, so I'm going to make that bold. Okay. And oh, let me skinny, skinny this up a little bit so I can see it. The price of a 20 year coupon bond, so a 20 year. Zero coupon bond with a thousand dollar face value, and the yield maturity is fifteen point eight four percent. Fifteen point eight four percent. What is the price? We got to calculate the present value. So the rate is fifteen point eight four percent. The number of periods is twenty. The payment, the, the annual payments is zero because it's a zero coupon bond. And then the face value is $1,000. And then remember the price is negative, so we're gonna undo the negative by putting just a negative sign in front of it. $50.80. Okay. So here the price is 863 when the yield maturity is 15.84, right? When, when it, one year maturity, the price is quite large, right? I'm going to get the $1,000 in one year. I'm going to pay a lot of money to get $1,000 in one year, right? If I got to wait 20 years, I'm only willing, only to, I'm only willing to pay like $52.82, right? The price of the zero coupon bond blank as the maturity rises, holding all else equal. So we're holding the yield maturity constant in these two scenarios. 
We're holding the face value constant. <clears throat> the only thing we're allowing to change is whether it's a one year or a 20 year coupon bond and the price falls. So the price of a zero coupon bond falls as the maturity rises. So that's, a, that's an important principle of zero coupon bonds. Now, what about the price of a zero coupon bond right here? The price of a zero coupon bond is generally what? This is below the for face value. This is below the face value. This is below the face value. This is below the face value. And this is below the face value. So the price of a, uh, a zero coupon bond is generally below less than the face value. And that's why, so it's selling less than what we could say par value, right? Selling less below par. We call that a discount bond or discount bonds. Zero coupon bonds are also called zero or discount bonds. Okay. Now in scenario three, we have a 10% thousand dollar bond that matures in five years. So I'm gonna change this to five. And well, I'm gonna change this to five. Um, thin this up a little bit more. So I got five thousand dollar bond and the payment is 10% of a thousand, so $100. And we wanna know the price. When the yield to maturity is 5.9%. So the yield maturity is 5.9%, five years, 10% times $1,000 face values, $100 payments each year, and the face value is $1,000. So the price is gonna be, the pre, using the present value function, the negative of the present value function, with the rate being 5.9%, the number of periods being five, the payment being, or the the you know the payment receiving every year one hundred dollars, and the face value is going to be down here, a thousand dollars. This is a thousand dollars right there, and so the price is that value. Delete the. Let me do this. I'll change the number to general, and then back down the number of decimal places. Okay. Now the yield of maturity goes to 6.9%. <clears throat> the price drops. So the yield of maturity increased, the price increased, right? <clears throat> <clears throat> so the price of the bond falls as the yield of maturity rises, holding all its constant, constant. Okay. Now if the bond is purchased for $1,173.18 in year four, and then it's held for only its final year, what is the current yield? Remember what the current yield is? The current yield is the coupon payment divided by the price. So the current yield, let's just change your numbers here. The bond is purchased. So the bond is purchased, that's the price, for $1,173.18. I want to know the current yield. The payment is $100 because it's 10% of 1,000. The face value is $1,000. 
And this five-year bond is purchased in year four and it's only held for its final year. So what are you getting? Well, you're getting one coupon payment because the other four, the first four, have been paid out to the previous owner. So you're getting the fourth, you're getting the fifth year coupon payment and you're getting the $1,000 face value because you bought it at the end of year four and you're holding it until it matures for one year. So it's an equivalent of one year bond. So what we can do is we can take five minus four and we get one. So it's a five year bond, but you've lost, you haven't got the first four annual payments. You only get the last payment, right? And you want to get the current yield. And the current yield is just the coupon payment divided by the price of the bond. So the current yield is down here. It is the coupon payment divided by the price. And we turn that into a percent with two decimal places. So 8.52%. That's the current yield. Whoop, I forgot to delete the percent symbol. Okay, what is the capital gain or loss? Let's go to that part in the notes. Okay, so the gain is the face value minus what you paid. So this is what you're gonna sell it for to, if it's a treasury bond, you're gonna sell it to treasury for the face value, right? That's essentially what you're doing. You're selling it back to treasury at the face value. You're holding it for a year and you bought it at a price that was determined by the market um, four years after it was issued. And you divide by the price. So this is what it is minus what it was divided by what it was. That's the gain. And this is the current yield, okay? Let's put it right here. Oh, I can't put it up any higher. There we go, we'll put it like that. Okay, so we gotta calculate the gain. The gain, if you remember from the notes, like I just said, is the face value, what you're gonna sell it for in a year which is what that's what you essentially do when you give it back to the Fed and the Fed gives you the face value, you sell it back to them. And minus the price that you paid for it in year four. Then you're gonna divide that by the price that you paid for it in year four. So essentially what this is, is it's um, is what it is at the end of the year, minus what it was at the beginning of the year, divided by what it was at the beginning of the year. Hit enter. and add two decimal places. So the gain or loss, it's a loss because you paid a higher price than what you're gonna get paid by treasury when you redeem it at the treasury. So there's a loss here, a capital loss. Get rid of the percent symbol. Okay. And then what is the return? Well, the return is the current yield, coupon payment divided by the price, plus the gain, right? And the gain here is negative, it's a loss. So this is the current yield, I see, and this is the gain, right? So you just add those two together to get the return. So the return is a negative 6.24%. Okay, if the bond is purchased for a lower price in year four, then held for a year, only its final year, the current yield is what? The capital gain loss is what and the return is what? So all we have to do here is change the price. We're gonna change the price down to this value. Same exact scenario. Okay. 
the current yield went up because we're taking the payment and dividing by a lower price. So the current yield went up. The gain is not as negative because the, what you purchased it for is smaller, right? You're still sunk to the treasury, if it's a treasury bond, $4,000 at the end of maturity, right? So the gain is only negative 11.3%. And then the return is not so negative, right? Because you're you're taking a much smaller loss. Okay. If the bond is purchased for a thousand dollars. Okay, so now if we purchased it for a thousand dollars instead, the current yield is the coupon rate, right? Because you're dividing the payment by the price. And the coupon rate is hundred divided by the face value. So the current yield is 10%. The gain is zero because you paid a thousand at the beginning of the year. At the end of year four, you paid a thousand. At the end of year five, the treasury gives you a thousand dollars. The percent change in that is zero. So your gain is zero. You don't gain, you don't lose. And the return is 10%, the sum of the two. Okay. If the bond is purchased for nine hundred dollars, so now you're purchasing the bond for nine hundred dollars. The current yield is now above the the current yield is now above the coupon rate because you're taking not one hundred divided by the price of nine hundred dollars, and so your uh, current yield is eleven point one one percent. And now you have a pretty big gain. Check this out. You bought it for 900 at the end of year four, and you're selling it back to treasury at redemption for $1,000 face value. So this is what it is at the end of year five, and this is what it was for you at the beginning of year five, divided by what it was. And the gain is 11.11%. And the return is 22.22%. Okay. Now, if the bond is purchased for $900, we're going to keep that at $900, right? We're going to keep the price at $900. And the seller removes the fifth coupon payment because these coupon bonds, they have these little coupons on them, and you can remove the coupon payment. So really, the only thing you're getting here, you can't, the, the seller took the coupon, the fifth coupon payment off. So you're getting... There's no, there's no payment to redeem. You can't mail the coupon in to get that payment, right? So the current yield is zero because the coupon payment divided by the price is zero. You still have a capital gain of 11.11% .11%, and your return is zero plus 11.11% .11 or 11.11%, okay? If the bond is purchased for nine dollars in year five, you sold it for nine hundred dollars after you tore off the fifth coupon. So you're the person. Um, you sold it. You you purchased for nine hundred dollars. You sold it for nine hundred dollars after you tore off the fifth coupon payment. So the face value now becomes the price of what it is. And the present value becomes the price of what it was. You bought it for nine hundred. You sold it for nine hundred. In other words, you're not getting the uh, you're not getting the face value because you bought it for nine hundred. You sold it for nine hundred. But before you sold, you took off the coupon for the coupon payment, and so you're going to collect the hundred dollar coupon payment. So your current yield is. The $100 payment divided by the price of what you paid for it, which is 11.11%. .11%. The capital gain is zero because 
you paid 900, you tore off the coupon, and you sold it for 900. So the gain is zero. And then the return is 11.11%. And that is question two of homework 3A.